हेलो एंड वेलकम टू माय चैनल टीजे द टैक्स अकाउंटेंट प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू माय चैनल सो दैट यू कैन एक्सेस सम ऑफ द कूल टैक्स अकाउंटेंट रिलेटेड स्टफ दैट आई इंटेंड टू पोस्ट ऑन दिस चैनल द इंटेंशन ऑफ दिस चैनल इज टू प्रोवाइड द बेसिक्स ऑफ टैक्स अकाउंटिंग विच आर यूजफुल टू अ स्टूडेंट हु इज स्टडिंग अबाउट टैक्स अकाउंटिंग और समवन हु इज बिगनिंग देयर करियर एज अ टैक्स अकाउंटेंट So today we are going to talk about ETR uh anyone who has recently started as a tax accountant or has been studying taxes uh must have heard this word ETR several number of times uh during their courses so what is ETR ETR stands for effective tax rate and it's a key benchmark of a financial statement which tells the investors or the senior management as to how much of taxes is being paid by the entity on a global basis so the etr tells you the tax rate you are paying on your income on your worldwide uh, consolidated balance sheets and in uh, pnl statements so the another key aspect of etr is to provide a reconciliation of effective tax rate what that exactly means is uh you may be in a jurisdiction with a certain tax rate but your actual effective tax rate might be different than that for example in us the basic federal tax rate is 21% for corporations so uh but in a global entity which is uh a multinational company which has operations in more than one country may have a effective tax rate different than 21% so uh, if your company is conducting business in in a country or in a jurisdiction where the tax rate is less than 21% and bulk of their income comes from the non us jurisdiction with lower tax rate then your effective tax rate could be less than 21% uh, similarly uh, if you are operating in a country or a jurisdiction where the tax rate is higher than 21% and bulk of your income is coming from those non us uh, sources then your effective tax rate can be more than 21% as well and then there are some other factors that can also affect uh, your etr to be different than your base rate uh, those could be things like valuation allowances any reserve for uncertain tax position some book tax differences uh tax credits that are allowed in certain jurisdiction uh and certain other things that we can go over so moving on to the recipe for etr uh what exactly uh, needs to be done to calculate etr and what's the key formula for it so the etr is your total tax expense divided by your total taxable income not taxable income your total income as per your us cap financials uh, that is a simple way of explaining anyone how to calculate etr but some of the key aspects of it are you start uh, you calculate your etr by uh, dividing your total tax expenses with uh, your total income uh, as per us cap financials and as we talked about the reconciliation so you start your etr reconciliation with the statutory tax rate for your parent company and uh, there could be a number of adjustment that go into your uh, etr calculation to arrive at the final effective tax rate so some of those could be state and local taxes like in us we have a federal based income tax for corporation and a state based income tax for corporation so uh when we are doing our etr reconciliation we tend to start with the federal base rate of 21% uh but if your entity is paying uh, state taxes then your uh, tax rate is going to be more than 21% so state and local taxes form as one of the pieces of your etr reconciliation second one is the foreign tax rate differential which means that if you are operating in more than one country uh, then you are subject to different tax rates uh, so the tax rate in the country you are operating could be less than uh, the us tax rate or it could be more than the us tax rate and that flows into your uh, reconciliation uh, some of the permanent book tax differences that can cause 
um, some noise in your ETR reconciliation. There could be pieces of income that are uh, not taxable for tax purposes, but are shown as income in US GAAP, which will uh, reduce your ETR as per GAAP, but your actual adjusted tax rate or the effective tax rate as per your tax return would be uh, less than your GAAP tax rate. Uh, other item is the tax credit. So in some jurisdictions, uh, corporations are allowed to take credits for employing a certain number of people in their organization or investing uh, in some key areas uh, in some countries known as special economic zones. Uh, so that can affect your effective tax rate because it's going to drive down the tax rate in that jurisdiction. The next item that can affect your effective tax rate is the valuation allowance. So valuation allowance is a kind of a bad debt reserve against your deferred tax asset, uh, which can drive your tax expense upwards and causing a higher effective tax rate. We will discuss valuation allowance in a different presentation. The next item is uncertain tax positions, which uh, essentially means the tax controversies that your company is engaged in. So those also go into your tax expense for GAAP and can cause some noise in your effective tax rate. Then the last item is the discrete tax item. So any out of period uh, tax adjustment that you need to recognize may have an impact on your effective tax rate. And then uh, those are generally the key items which affect your ETR reconciliation. Now moving over to the key components of ETR or the stuff that ETR is made up of. So if you are starting your career as a tax accountant, you would uh, hear a key term known as tax package or tax info data uh, used in your company. So that essentially is a generally is an Excel file which is floated around by tax department to each of their group companies to collect the information uh, from all the entities which are part of your US consolidation group. Uh, some of the other information that is collected from worldwide entities is the uncertain tax positions and you collect the information related to valuation allowance. You are trying to figure out if valuation allowance is required against any of your deferred tax assets. Uh, any US domestic tax issues that you want to get information on from your US domestic entities that are part of your group. Uh, business forecast. Business forecast comes into play during the quarterly closes. So during the quarter close, you are uh, working on a combination of actual data and forecast data. So that's how you use business forecast to come with a prorated income number, which that which then you can apply to your uh, income tax expense to calculate the tax rate, the effective tax rate. And of another other component of ETR is the financial reporting system, which essentially tells you, uh, which is the source of your uh, profit and loss statement and balance sheet. Uh, in some entities use Hyperion, some use various kinds of financial reporting systems. So that was a very brief uh, introduction to effective tax rate and some of the key concepts related to that. Uh, and please subscribe to my channel and uh, I have some very cool uh, topics lined up uh, which I'm going, going to post on this channel very soon. Uh, we're going to talk about valuation allowance in detail. We'll talk about uncertain tax position in detail and some of the other concepts as well. So please do subscribe and click the bell icon uh, on YouTube so that you can get the alert whenever I post a new video on YouTube. Thank you.